I, uh, I was going to learn how to say good afternoon in Finnish, and I looked it up on Google Translate and gave up, I'm afraid. So <laughs> I do apologize. Uh, but uh, uh, Kitos, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to be here today and presenting our latest research project to you, which looks at uh, the value of individual media for brand building campaigns. Uh, we launched it uh, in March back in the UK and actually it garnered quite a lot of headlines, some of them quite punchy. And if you want a summary of, of what the presentation is about, uh, then maybe the middle one gives you an idea. Marketers are clueless about media effectiveness. Here's the proof. If you're a marketer, I didn't write this, okay? It was a journalist. And it, it's a, it's a, it does give you an idea of the sort of things I'm going to talk through, which is proof about some of the gap between perception and reality. Uh, so anyway, why did we commission this study in the first place? Well, we'll very quickly touch on this. This is UK data, but uh, I understand it's a very similar position uh, in Finland as well. So radio accounts for around about 16% of all time spent with media, yet only gets 4% of total ad spend, just under 4%, in fact, in the UK. Um, so uh, in the UK, we got loads of effectiveness data about how well radio works for advertisers. Yet, this isn't really shifting drastically. So we feel there must be something else happening behind this pattern. And, and that something else, we think, is heuristics. So uh, for the uninitiated, heuristics are sort of simple rules or shortcuts that people use to form judgments and make decisions. They are formed based on our personal experience and what we learn about the world from our parents, our friends, our teachers, the media we consume, and the ads that are contained within the media. And slightly counterintuitively, the more complex a decision, the more likely we are to use heuristics to make it. And our theory is that despite there being more data available than ever before, heuristics are playing an increasingly prevalent role in terms of uh, the media decision-making process. And we think that's down to three, three main factors. The first one is complexity. So this is driven by the multiple combinations of uh, media channels, platforms, and ad formats that are available to advertisers these days. Secondly, data overload, resulting from the occasionally conflicting data and research headlines that pour through the trade media and wash over us every single day. And finally, complexity, oh sorry, specialization. So this is the increasing focus of agency and advertiser roles designed to help organizations cope with the challenges of the first two factors and hopefully exploit them for their uh, benefit too. So more specialists spending more time negotiating the uh, detail of an increasingly intricate media market doesn't really make ideal conditions for people to get a really sort of broad and rounded perspective on the value of media for brand building. So it's no wonder that we collectively resort to heuristics to cope with this, because even people like us are human beings after all. I was the last time I looked anyway. So, uh, so that's largely why we commissioned this project, uh, to get a deeper understanding of what's shaping current perceptions of media, and secondly, to identify how relevant these are by evaluating the true strengths of media with a wide-ranging analysis of existing evidence. Uh, the company that we appointed to run the project is Ubiquity. I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but Ubiquity are um, a, a multinational media consultancy. They tend to do a lot of uh, uh, buying auditing for advertisers in the UK, and they also run econometric analysis on behalf of some advertisers as well. So they've got really deep media market expertise, and more importantly for us, they are completely impartial. They do not care about radio more than any other medium. They just care about their advertisers getting the best value from their media spend. So that's why we appointed them. Um, oh yes, I should also say that although shaped by our initial brief, the work that you're about to see, the analysis and the results that derive from it are purely ubiquitous work. I didn't affect anything at all. So, how did they do it? Well, they started off with some primary research. They did uh, 116 25-minute telephone interviews. That was a minimum 25 minutes with a mixture of advertiser and agency media decision makers. And they used this to try and understand which media attributes are most valued by advertisers 
when it comes to brand building activity. Uh, the people who, uh, who responded to the survey were also asked to assess how well they felt each medium performed against each of those individual attributes. And then to understand how each medium actually performed against these attributes, based on evidence, Ubiquiti reviewed 75 different uh, industry studies from 50 different sources, and they combined this with their own proprietary information um, in terms of industry cost norms and ROI data. So that's what they did. What did they find out? Well, let's start with what people feel are the most important attributes of an advertising medium for brand building campaigns. Uh, and just before I show you the list, I just uh, quickly talk you through how this was uh, arrived at. Ubiquiti developed a list of 12 attributes, which you'll see on the next slide, uh, and then they created a trade-off exercise. So during their telephone interviews, they would present four different attributes to uh, the respondent and ask them to choose one that they would definitely keep and one that they would definitely discard or throw away. And they ran this exercise multiple times with each respondent. And across all of it, they ended up testing 60 different combinations across all of the 116 interviews. And here's how the attributes stack up. Uh, there are four standout leaders targeting the right people in the right place at the right time, return on investment, triggering a positive emotional response, and building brand salience. So brand salience is like top of mind awareness your brand instantly pops into people's minds without too much effort when they're thinking about your product category. Now, one very reassuring thing on this was that advertisers and agencies were broadly aligned in terms of this prioritization. So that's the list. I focused on the top half. I also want to quickly address the bottom half, um, because particularly in uh, the context of some of the headlines we've had over the last year or two, uh, these might initially seem quite surprising. For example, you know, safe environment scores very low, as does transparent audience measurement. And actually, thinking about it, that led us to conclude that when people are forced to make a decision, they value outcomes more than hygiene factors. So positive emotional response is more valued than low cost, ROI trumps third-party audience measurement, and brand salience is deemed more important than a safe environment. And while it is surprising at first, I think it's quite logical when you think about how people are bonused if their campaign succeeds. Nobody ever received a bonus for placing their media spend in a medium with third-party audience measurement, but they did for increasing campaign ROI. So the next stage was to assess how different media score against each of the individual attributes. So a quick uh, a reminder of how this was uh, deliver, delivered. So uh, the score comparisons that you're about to see were developed by Ubiquiti coming up uh, with different scoring criteria using different approaches for each uh, attribute and for different types of evidence. Um, and then the decision maker perceptions were captured during the primary interview stage. Now, You'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to run through all 12 attributes today. We don't have time, but if you want to have a look at the detail, you can go to the Radio Centre website and analyse the report uh, and uh, everything online. It's all freely available. So today, I'm just going to focus on three of the top four. And we're going to start by having a look at return on investment. Now, return on investment is all about straightforward data comparison. There's really nothing to argue with here. That's how well they perform. Uh, just a quick note that radio is second only to TV. But I also want to draw your attention to the similar performances of print and online media here. Now, because it's a straightforward data comparison, unsurprisingly, the table, the evidence table, looks like this. TV number one, radio number two, et cetera, et cetera. However, perceptually, this is what people think. Print media dropped from third to eighth and ninth, while online video climbs from fifth, based on evidence, to second in terms of perception. Now, in terms of print, it appears that perhaps this inconsistency is driven by declining audience, but this is actually irrelevant to the ROI equation. It's very simple. How much you got in returns and how much you spent on it, audience has no relation to that but a good example of perhaps how perception are influencing the way people feel. 
Now, moving on to uh, triggering a positive emotional response. This was something that was hugely important to brand advertisers and actually you know, the most important thing for advertisers overall. Now, here, Ubiquiti aggregated evidence from 11 studies, uh, the ones shown on the slide, and they scored each medium on its ability to generate a positive emotional connection. Equally important, though, uh, they assessed whether the ads felt to be, were felt to be a seamless part of the experience, because if the ads jar, then it affects how positively people respond to them. So, based on their uh, evidence, Ubiquity placed cinema, TV, and radio in the top slots. And note, the online video is joint last. Yet industry perceptions suggest that online video is the third best medium for delivering this. And I don't know about you, but I think here the perceptions are quite strange because they, they seem to run counter to human experience. I don't know how you feel about an auto-playing video when you're trying to get something on YouTube. I'm automatically trying to click the skip button as soon as I possibly can. How, how is that a positive experience? And it would appear that I'm not the only one that feels this way. A recent Chief Marketing Officer Council report into how brands annoy fans highlighted how auto-playing video ads are one of the most annoying digital formats. So clearly, once again, we've got wider influences at play here. And finally, I'm just going to touch on the most valued attribute, which is targeting. Now, for this one, Ubiquiti rated each medium on its ability to target in six different ways. Geography, demographics, day of week, time of day, contextual and addressable. And then rated each medium uh, yes, yes with limitations, or no, and scored them accordingly. Now, radio scores highest on this analysis, but lowest in terms of perception. Now, maybe that's because radio is a broadcast medium, so therefore people naturally assume it can't do that defined sort of targeting thing. Perhaps. Social media, on the other hand, rightly scores highly on both lists. Uh, performing particularly strongly on addressable qualities, as this advertiser quote suggests. We have the exact data on who we are reaching, their exact age, where they live, etc. So we're able to focus our message on them. But we think this comment is also indicative of a wider issue, which is that digital media have fundamentally reframed our expectations of targeting. To the extent that many people now feel that the right people can only be reached in the right place and at the right time through addressable media. Now, everyone's excited about the prospect of minimizing wastage, but perhaps this has caused the industry to focus too much on it, perhaps to the detriment of what the advertiser is trying to achieve. So, to summarize this section briefly, digital has reframed expectations of targeting. It's all about addressable now, uh, addressability nowadays. Perceptions don't always reflect the consumer experience. Does anyone know any people who feel positive about auto-playing video ads? Finally, unrepresented perceptions win out over evidence, even if the data is clear and straightforward. So finally, let's have a look at how each medium performs overall. So taking each medium score for the different attributes and weighting these based on the relative importance of each attribute, Ubiquity placed TV top, radio second, and print media third and fourth. Yet, when we compare these scores to those applied by our advertising customers, we see that radio, newspapers, and magazines all slide down the scale, with online video and social media climbing to the top. So despite all of the evidence to the contrary, it appears that Perception is the driver of action. So this chart shows the relative evidence-based ranking uh, of individual media on the horizontal axis in relation to total media spend on the vertical axis. And the bubble size is, is loosely indicative of that media spend. So when all of the available evidence is taken into account, it turns out that radio is the second most valuable medium for brand building campaigns after TV. Yet, it's at the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of media investment the perfect demonstration of how undervalued this medium is. And it's clear that because people perceive digital media to be stronger, they commit significant budgets to them. 
Um, so in conclusion, I think this image sums things up nice, nicely. I don't know whether you're familiar with the distracted boyfriend meme over here. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of information and data available. We often rely on perceptions and instincts to plan. And that is at the risk of inhibiting advertising effectiveness. So those are the findings. What should we be doing as a result? Well, here's what Ubiquiti suggests advertisers do. Number one, reevaluate their media mix on the basis of the evidence available. Also, acknowledge that conventional targeting approaches are still effective alongside addressable advertising. For example, what's the most effective way of speaking to a car driver and encouraging them to slow down? Is it a radio ad? Or is it a data-targeted, programmatically served ad in their social media feed on their mobile phone? Of course, it's a radio ad. The radio ad is the one that cuts through. So they, can, they both do different jobs and at different times. They can both be effective. Uh, and also, Ubiquiti suggested that uh, advertisers and agencies should be pushing for more research of online formats, or at the very least, ask online publishers to make the detail of the research they do have more readily available. As one advertiser said, marketing is ultimately about the mix and the layering of all the touch points. It's about getting the proportions right to be most effective. So thinking about this, um, and I'm going to freestyle this next bit a bit. So th th the question is, if this research makes you think we should be reevaluating our media mix, what sort of role could radio possibly be playing within that to make it the most, uh, to deliver the most effective outcomes for your brand? So. I've got a piece of research, a separate piece of research that was conducted by the uh, Institute of Practitioners in Advertising. It's a great study. It's called The Long and the Short of It. It reviews 30 years' worth of IPA effectiveness studies. And these are the creme de la creme of case studies, where they isolate the effects of radio on uh, business metrics such as sales, profit, market share, those sort of things. So there's over 1,000 of them that were reviewed within this study. And they tried to assess, at a headline level, what are the effects of advertising, and how can they be optimized? And one of the conclusions they came to is that the most effective campaigns use a mixture of long-term brand building, using mass media to reach as many people as possible with implicit emotional messages to change brand equity, combined with shorter-term activation strategies to drive sales through on- and offline response using explicit messaging. Using the two in combination is more effective overall and drives better, longer-term profit. So if that's the case, oh, and the ratio, optimum ratio of spend should be 60-40 in favor of brand building. So the study also considered what sort of uh, media attributes are important when you're trying to do activation or brand building. So let's just review these and consider radio in that context. So activation, that's tactical advertising. I don't think I need to persuade anyone in this room about the value of radio for tactical advertising. That's how everybody uses it. It's brilliant. And, there's, and the reason is because actually we can do that targeting. We can do the day of week stuff. We can get messages closer to the point of purchase. Uh, and also, the costs and lead times allow you to produce more messages and turn them around quickly to get the latest promotional message out. The brand building stuff is interesting, though. What requirements do you need from media to deliver your brand effectively? And the first one of those is reach, reaching as many people as possible, speaking to the whole market to build your brand amongst people who aren't yet in the market to buy it. You need media that have that emotional connection so you can shift people's emotional um, uh, impressions of your brand. And finally, you need media that are capable of building brand fame. Because the more famous a brand is, the more people are likely to talk about it. And that helps add to your paid media spend value. Now, talking about brand building a bit more, we know that radio delivers reach, very strong reach. It's a great reach medium. In terms of emotion, as we've seen from the Ubiquity study, radio scores particularly effectively there. And the IPA data bank also demonstrates that radio is highly effective at building brand fame. Campaigns that use radio delivered much higher levels of brand fame than those that didn't, 50% more, in fact. And interestingly, campaigns that use radio have better effects across all measures, from short-term activation effects, through brand effects, 
business effects, and then even longer and broader effects, such as share price and those sort of things as well. So using radio can do both brand and it can do the tactical side as well. So I think a really important learning for people to take away about radio is use it for brand response. And by brand response, I mean use it to keep driving your sales today. That tactical element can still work, but think about how you can also use it and introduce an element to build your brand over time. So I just have four more slides that I'm going to whiz through. What can we tell you about getting the best effects from radio? Reach is important for brands. Reach, actually, weekly reach, is also important for optimizing radio ROI. So this was from a meta-analysis of ROI data that we conducted before, and it shows the relationship between weekly coverage and sales returns. So reach is the best way of building a brand and driving sales through radio. In terms of brand elements, though, how can you introduce an element of brand into your radio? I've got one word for you, which is consistency. Think about consistent audio elements that you can use from ad to ad, campaign to campaign. And over time, those are the things that will build your brand, be it sonics, voice, whatever. And music, actually, I think is a really helpful shortcut in all of this. Um, we've done a lot of work with audio branding, and we know that music instantly communicates what, who the brand is, who's speaking to them, very quick brand recognition but it also communicates meaning about the brand and really emphasizes those emotional elements. Not only that, it does the soft measures, but there's a lot of research that shows that music can also have an effect on the bottom line as well, with a, a sales effect of up to 30%. And finally, thinking about radio in the context of your wider plan, how much money should you be allocating to radio? Well, the same ROI study that we did, a meta-analysis of data, suggested that the optimum investment in radio was 20%, at which stage returns are 8.5% higher. Now, that's a really significant difference, purely by allocating more money to radio within your media mix. And since we published this research in the UK, we now have 50% of our top 20 advertisers spending 20% of their budget on radio or more. So clearly, in the UK, advertisers have taken on board this learning and are progressing and using the medium more strategically. And I think if, it, if you're thinking about using radio and want to get better effects, then I'd urge you to think about this. Be more ambitious. Don't just use radio for tactical. Think about driving your business today and brand over time. Think about what audio brand assets you can develop and can certainly consider music. And finally, focus on driving that weekly reach and also your share of budget. Kitos. Thank you. Very, Thank very you, Mr. Mark Barber. <laughs> Thank you. We have a uh, gift for you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Everyone in this room knows that when you're watching a video from uh, on YouTube, there's this ad, and it takes like five seconds to put the push the skip uh, button. Skip. Yeah. And it feels like an eternity. Yes. But should one even use money for online ads or make online videos anymore? Because I was kind of stunned that online videos and ads were scored that low. Well, I think what I would say is that that's based on the available evidence. So they, there may be evidence for the individual advertisers have that demonstrates that it works very effectively for them. Uh, and I think some online video formats also, if they're within the middle of a, a piece of long form content you're watching on YouTube, it feels less interruptive because it's then more incorporated into the flow. So I'm not saying don't spend any money on digital formats. I think it's just about saying, think carefully about what really you're trying to, trying to achieve and what can that deliver versus radio. Make it an evidence-based decision rather than a, a it's digital, therefore it's best. <laughs> <laughs>